Hello and welcome back. My name is Colin and I am doing something I have never done on this channel before and I'm recording back-to-back -back videos. This is video four in my Death to MC Lag series. In video three, we put in as much configuration for EVPN VXLAN as possible without breaking MC Lag. The idea here is that if you wanted to stage a single commit cutover for conversion of MC Lag to a collapsed core design using EVPN VXLAN, the last video would have gotten you right up to your maintenance window. This video is the maintenance window video. This is where we do the MC lag cleanup and the last little bit of EVPN VXLAN config, hit commit, and well, cross our fingers and hope everything works. Right? That's the kind of confidence you're looking for, isn't it? Terrific. Let's get started. Let's make sure that we haven't broken anything over here. Uh, nope. Everything still pings. Show ICCP. ICCP links are up. In the last video, we did create this new link. This is where our BGP peering for EVPN is configured. We have our underlay and overlay up and running. And the first thing we're gonna do is back up our config. Now, I don't need to do that. I've already backed up my config. If I do a load override and a question mark, you'll see I have a bunch of configurations here already. Uh, if you wanna back yours up, just type the word save, give it a name like uh, uh, foo.bar, whatever. It's a plain text file, so you can name it txt or conf or whatever you want uh, and save it. That way, if you need to reload to this existing state, something goes weird, wild, sideways, whatever, you can. First thing I want to do today, copy the MC lag portions of your config to a text file, print it out, and burn them. Uh, this is an optional step, of course, but if you do decide to do this, I recommend making a small boat, setting the boat on fire, pushing the boat into a lake, putting the lake into a box, and hurling the box into space. You can start with the EVPN VXLAN config if you want. But since we're here to kill MC lag, we're going to start by killing MC lag. Oh. First uh, point of order is to disable the ICCP slash ICL link here. Uh, if you have two separate links for ICCP and ICL traffic, you're going to be disabling both of them. I've got them merged in my lab. So we're just going to set XE000 disable. The reason we do this instead of just deleting the config or removing the cable or the link from our lab in a production environment, if you want to have the capability of rolling back, you probably want to leave all your cables plugged in where they are and just admin down the link. That way, if you have to unwind this, it's just a matter of loading the config you just backed up and everything should work fine. We're also going to delete the ICCP interface. This is the aggregate interface that's associated here. Uh, that we will get rid of that. You can deactivate these things if you want to. Um, I'm going to delete them. <laughs> it really just depends. Uh, you don't have to deactivate them in my mind if you are, uh, if you've already backed up your config. So I think that becomes superfluous because if you need to do a rollback, you're not going to go back in and reactivate everything. You're going to run one command, restore the old config, you'll be back up and running. Delete AE0. Uh, Delete the ICCP interface. Oh, yep. Let's uh, we have our aggregates that are pointing northbound and southbound. These two right here, they have MCAE config that we are going to remove. AE1. You can see that right here. That goes away, and so does this admin key. Delete aggregated ether options MCAE and delete aggregated ether options lack P admin key. Great. Up one, edit AE2, do the same thing, just the up arrow to save, just a touch of time, show, verified, done, terrific. All right, uh, top, show VLANs. You'll see that we have an ICCP VLAN and an IRB. We're gonna delete both of those. So delete VLANs ICCP, delete interfaces IRB.100. We have the ICCP protocol. Show protocols ICCP. There it is. Don't need it. Delete protocols ICCP. Done. Uh, we have a service ID under our switch options. We also have some EVPN VXLAN config here. We obviously don't want to delete the whole switch options stanza, so we'll say delete switch options service ID. That's the one bit that's unique to MC lag. Scroll down a bit. And then we there's some multi chassis configuration as well show multi chassis this should complain a bit because uh, we've removed some dependent config doesn't matter delete multi chassis done all right so that's all of the multi chassis lag config that we need to get rid of 
Finishing our EVPN VXLAN config, first step is to associate VNIs to VLANs. The way I like to do this is to map them one-to-one. -one. Uh, some people will talk about VNIs and make a big deal about the fact that there's like 16 million different values you can use and all this, that, and the other. Eh, nobody does that. Uh, wherever possible, map the VLAN values to the VNI values. Uh, it'll make your life a lot easier uh, for config and troubleshooting if you need to troubleshoot anything. Uh, we'll start with our VLANs. Uh, edit VLANs, show, and we're just adding VXLAN config to each of these. So set V10, VXLAN, VNI, 10. All right, see what that looks like? Great. Wash, rinse, and repeat. VNI 20, set V30, VXLAN, VNI 30, set V40, VXLAN, VNI 40. Show, done. Right? Perfect. Great. Now we need to go into our interface config for our aggregates and do our ESI configuration. In the, uh, not the last video, in video two, I talk a bit about uh, Ethernet segment identifiers. Uh, the one bit that you need to know about that, if you haven't watched that video, well, aside from going and watching that video, uh, the Ethernet segment identifier is all zeros uh, unless you are doing lag, in which case uh, the ASI value is a unique number, which you'll see here in just a moment. Uh, and that unique number is used in route advertisements to ensure that interfaces that are members of the same lag are associated with each other correctly. Set ESI. It's uh, quite a value. Uh, we've got 10 of these. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. <laughs> and that's, that's as unique as it needs to be. It just needs to match on both of the uh, devices here. The aggregate ethernet so that are associated with each other all need to have matching ESI values. Uh, and I'm gonna set all active, which just essentially means that everybody that's got a member interface can send and receive traffic. All active. Oh, hi. I'm bringing down these Legos. Great. Yeah. Sorry for the smash cut there. My son walked into the room. He had some Legos he had to show me. We've got one more step here. We're in AE. Oh, I'm on the wrong side here. Uh, we're in AE1. Uh, we've added our ESI value, our ESI all active, and we got to do the same for AE2. AE2 show set ESI. Zero, 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 three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to do a zero, two again. That's as unique as it needs to be. And then set ESI all active. Great. Show. Looks good. All right. Time for our Indiana Jones bag of sand idle moment with our commit. Oh, wait. Yeah, let's do this. Um, start pinging. We get a ping going. MC lag still up, still working. Do a show compare. All right. Uh, no, let's just do a commit. Whatever. Uh, go big or go home. Uh, commit and quit. This isn't meant to be instantaneous. Uh, this is something you would do in a maintenance window. I do expect as the control plane converges. Sometimes I see a dupe. I didn't this time. Oh, well, that's great. Cool. So. It also doesn't take an enormous amount of time. Now, depending on your scale, it might take longer. But as far as single commit uh, cutovers go, it's pretty painless. There's a couple of show commands that we can do here to verify the uh, EVPN VXLAN elements of our configuration. Uh, VXLAN to endpoint ESI. We'll see our two ESI lags here. and the VTEPs that have been assigned to them. Uh, show Ethernet switching MAC IP table. This is an EVPN specific command. And we can see host gateway and uh, IP addresses here of our hosts here. That's this guy. And show Ethernet switching EVPN. There's a bunch here that we can look at. We can look at the ARP table. Oh, show EVPN database. Perfect. And you know what? Let's check to some other endpoints. Uh, ping 40.14. Lovely. Awesome. <laughs> 
show route. We can see our BGP table now has information in it. To interpret this, you've got the route type followed by the router ID, and then we can use the detail or extensive toggles to get more information. Usually you're pretty interested in these type two routes because they carry your host information. In this case, we see, uh, no, what? No, go away, uh, MAC address. And as we go down, we will also see Macs and IPs as well. See, right here. Alrighty, that's it, short one. Um, in the next video, I think that's going to be me going back through this for L3. Hope it's been informative. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.